God's really good. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've been excited as we've been doing this series, Live, Sent, and Hearing Different Testimonies. We get together on Wednesday night. If you're not familiar, we have missional communities every Wednesday night. And it's fun to get together because we get to share our stories with, with each other, who we are, what God has done in our lives, and then we get to share the exciting things that God is doing through our lives. And so um, this week, again, we had another testimony, and somebody's really excited. Hey, I'm poor. I've got to pray for somebody. And, I, and this lady that I'm training now, she's actually a, a believer a little bit, and she's asking me, you know, how do I pray at work? And it's, it's just so fun to see us as a body moving forward in this, taking this as saying, yes, I want to own this, that we are Christ's ambassadors wherever we go, whatever we do, that he sent us. And maybe it just starts with getting to know somebody's name or saying hello to a neighbor, meeting somebody for lunch, but it progresses if we believe that God has given us an, an intentionality in our life, it is to share the hope that we have, the hope in Jesus Christ. So we've been excited about that. I wanted to remind you, as we've gone through this series, if, if you aren't familiar, we have a website that has all of the series uh, videos on there. But we've been saying live sent. We first started with our story, uh, knowing how to speak the gospel, uh, speak what Jesus has done in our lives, the good news of his, his story in us. Uh, and once we learn that and we get comfortable with that, then it becomes easier to talk to other people. We, the second week, we, we talked about using our home or using a meal. They said that Jesus likes to eat. And, and he, he was... In Luke, he was either going to a meal, coming from a meal, or at a meal. And it was around the, the dinner table that he actually did theology. Who he ate with was a, was a testimony, was, was a spoke about what he believed. That, hey, no, no matter what your background is, right? Jesus was eating with tax collectors and sinners. And all the religious people say, why are you going to do that? That's crazy. You're not supposed to do that. It's unclean. You know that will make you dirty. And, like, and Jesus said, no, this is part of the theology of Jesus. This is part of the good news and that I eat with people. I break down these barriers to come to God. And then we went on last week. Uh, we had one, we had Todd come in, uh, missionary Todd in Chicago, and he encouraged us, hey, yeah. work while it's day. That there's a coming a time where we won't be able to work. There's coming, there's coming an end to this when Jesus returns. And so, hey, let's get to work. Let's share the gospel of Jesus. Because at that point, it's going to be too late. Then last week, we encouraged you to take some practical steps in praying. Uh, we said, pray something. So if you hadn't received this card, there's a, as you're going out side today on the little table, there's a card that says, Live, Sent, Pray Something. And on here is uh, four spots for four different neighbors, four friends, four family members, four people you know that they need uh, an experience with Jesus. They need to come to Jesus and to hear the good news. And it gives you some practical scriptures. We went through, read through them that week uh, about how, how to pray, what to pray. But sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to pray. Anybody else in that boat? Uh, they just need Jesus. Jesus, get them. You know, that's what that's true. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so here's some scriptures about God's heart for them and God's activity uh, that leads them to Jesus. And so you can pray through those things. Uh, this week, we said, um, what, what's, the, what's the end of this, this series? What, what, what is the practical thing God did? We, we know he took ministry. He made it practical. He said, go eat with people. Uh, but he also came to serve. And so today's uh, message, the last part of our series, is going to be Live, Sent, Serve Someone. And so let's turn this morning to Matthew chapter 25. And this was read, um, read briefly last week, and I want to uh, read it again as the start of this message. Because if Jesus made ministry practical by saying, go and eat with somebody, he also made ministry very practically said, go and serve someone. Serve people. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to start reading here in verse 31. Again, it gives us a picture uh, that if you have a, a Bible that has the headers, it says sheep and goats. It, it gives us a picture that there is a, a difference between those who believe and those who don't believe. There's a separation that's coming. So we're going to read this, and it, and it gives some important um, words, I think some instruction for us today to think about serving somebody. So in verse 31, it reads, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people, one from another, as shepherds separate the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right, and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, 
Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was a prisoner, and you came and visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or when thirsty and give you something to drink? Or when did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothes you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This is an important point. So that the fire was not intended for us. It wasn't intended for uh, our neighbors. It wasn't intended for our loved ones and for those that we know that don't follow him. It was intended for Satan and his angels. It's at the heart of God's heart. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I, did, I needed closings, and you did not close me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger and needing clothing or sick and in prison and helped you? He replied, I, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. When I was uh, this week, actually this, this month, we've had uh, somebody a part of our missional community that uh, probably isn't the, the, the easiest person to be around. And uh, she has needs of different uh, sorts, and, and we've, we've done our best to invite her into the circle. And, and we said, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to love her and going to going to care for her. And, and yesterday, I had an opportunity. We had an opportunity to, to serve her. She needed to move out of her apartment and, and move her boxes from her house into storage. And so this whole plan was out ro was rolling, and she was making plans for the for moving. And then um, she said. Uh, Recently, uh, within the last week, she goes, is it okay that my storage unit is in DeForest? And I, you know, I was on a little test, right? And I was like, sure, you know, no matter where, you, where you're moving, you know, we're going to be here for you. And I said, okay, well, I need somebody to help me pick up my uh, truck at 9 in the morning on Saturday morning. Okay, you know, okay, we'll do that. Then we, we came to our house, and... Um, she had been working with the caregiver to, to pack up all of her house, and when we got there, it seemed like, I don't know, a quarter of her stuff wasn't packed. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't ready, and you know, it had stuff here and, and stuff there, and boxes that were misshaped and things sticking out of them. And, you know, it was like, it was, you come to tell somebody, you're like, all right, I want that everything like, nice and perfect, or let's yeah. just give it all in a truck, let's move it, right? And so I, I got on my, my moving, anybody have uh, like moving clothes or your, your your yeah, work clothes, right? You're, you're serving, whether if I'm going to go on, I had to go and do some uh, tarring on my roof. I, I had some tar pants, so, you know, that I have. I have a pair of jeans. They don't fit me anymore. I would have wore those. Um, but uh, I have a pair of jeans with all caulking on it and, you know, paint from all the different paint jobs I've done. You know, like, you have the, that set of clothes, right? And when you're wearing that particularly set of clothes, you know, it's not the clothes you come and preach on on Sunday morning. It, 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 you know, when you go out and meet somebody for the first time at a restaurant, those aren't like, I want to take those clothes to go and wear on that day, right? It, it, it's usually not the first thing. And it was interesting, as we're carrying out uh, these boxes and loading them up, and there wasn't a lot of people that were wandering the halls of her apartment, but there was a, a few, and I had these thoughts to myself. I said, oh, I don't want them to think of me, like, yeah. wrong. And it, Right? I didn't, you know, I'm out there moving at 9.30, I didn't take a shower before, I don't want to get all sweaty. I'm like, alright, I'll just throw on my clothes and get on my, my dirty shoes and then we're going to go, go get to work, right? But I, I found myself even yesterday, like, thinking as people were passing by, or, or thinking, like, oh, what are they thinking about me? Being dirty, sir, and, you know, like, what are they thought? And I was like, oh, I want to have to make myself better, or you... I'm just being real, right? Do you guys get the same thought? I'm serving, I'm being dirty, I want to do something, and I'll say, oh, but I don't know what people are going to think about me, right? Here it's really interesting to see that Jesus connects uh, lives that are changed by his gospel message with people who serve, who visit the sick, who go and give clothes away to people, who go and do the, the dirty work, the hard work, 
are those that people who believe, who have received his message. This separates those who do not believe and those who do believe. That's really interesting, uh, as I was going through those thoughts yesterday, that uh, in the world or in our culture, right, that uh, greatness is defined usually by terms of power and prestige and positions. Right, uh, have you ever met that person that loves to list the, the amount of degrees they have behind their name? Uh, those are sometimes the harder people to deal with in life, right? But uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a part of our culture that says, yeah, uh, great, to be great, is defined by how much power I have, how much prestige I have, the, the position I have. If we can demand service from others, then we've arrived, right? Uh, if I can get other, the more people can serve me, man, I, I, I've arrived. I've gotten to that place. I have some servants. I got enough people in my house that if people are serving me, doing my dishes, doing these things, I mean, now I've arrived. If I, I've gotten to the place in a company where, man, I've arrived, but I have enough people underneath me that can do my bidding for me, can do my work for me. It's interesting in the, in the me first culture that serving it is not a popular yeah. idea. Yeah. Getting dirty for somebody else, that, that's, that's a little hard. It rubs me the wrong way still. Yeah. Matthew 20, uh, verse 26. It's a really interesting uh, part of the, the story of Jesus. He's, he's getting closer to the end of his ministry. You know, and, and he's talking a lot more about the kingdom that's coming, that and what it's going to look like, and and, and so this amazing family, you know, they, they start bidding for who's going to sit with uh, with Jesus. The mother, actually, of the disciples, said, "Okay, okay, you know, my sons are really good. Uh, can they sit with you when you set up your kingdom?" And Jesus' reply cuts straight to the point. Straight to the message of his kingdom. That whoever will be great among the people will be the servant of all. That's right. In Matthew 20, 26. That's right. And it's, it's these kind of statements that Jesus makes that just get me kind of sometimes, to, it's hard to swallow. Right, I mean, this isn't how I live. This isn't how I'm used to operating in things. But the greatest will be the servant of all. See, right. Jesus measured greatness in terms of our service, not our status. Not where we've come, not where we've arrived to, but how we are serving. God, determined, God determines our greatness by how many people we serve, not how many people are serving us. I sometimes have to re remind myself of that, and especially in a position now of management in, the, in a local restaurant. I've got to remember, hey, my position isn't just to command the other people what to do, and I've got all, a lot of cleaning tasks we have to do. You know, the restaurants get dirty if somebody isn't taken care of it properly, right? So I, I got the cleaning projects I'm all doing, and then I challenged myself every once in a while. Okay, no, Andrew, you're not going to be at the computer at this moment and, and doing whatever you need to do. And Andrew, get, get down and go, go scrub all the, we originally scrubbed all the, the feet of all the chairs in the restaurant. You know, that, that's a, hey, let's go serve together. So con uh, contrary to the world's idea of greatness. It's hard to understand sometimes. It's even harder to practice. Yesterday I thought I was doing good, right? I got all my I got all, all my dirty clothes on, I'm ready to go serve, and then I found, man, these things are still in my heart. That I'd rather be I'd rather people that are walking by think highly of me than think of me as a servant. Somebody is just willing to do. Somebody used to say this when we we're, you know. Anybody do an internship before? At internships, when doing an internship, they love to they love to use all the serving lines, you know. But this one was still good enough. I I repeated everyone's fault. But you know how how much of a servant's heart you have by your reaction when somebody treats you like a servant. You know how much of a servant's heart you have. You know where your heart is when somebody treats you like a servant. That's a good manipulation line when you're um, uh, interning in ministry. But, um, but the reality of it is true. And I'm, I'm here doing these dirty boxes. God bless Brittany and William Williams in here. So there was a toilet seat riser that needed to be removed uh. yesterday. And I was not going to touch it. <laughs> I was... <laughs> And she, I knew she had a, the, the lady had a caregiver that was coming today, and I was like, okay, that lady can come in and remove this. 
and one of them was like, hey, where's the screwdriver at? All right, and, and, and um, Brittany said, all right, we can do this, let's get this. So I got a screwdriver out there, and it wasn't clean at all. Oh, was it clean, William? It, it wasn't clean. When somebody treats you like a servant, you know you, your heart is right. When people treat you like a servant and you're yeah. willing to serve. And she was demanding. It was a fun day. Disciples, they argued about this. They wanted to have the best position in the kingdom. They wanted to sit in the best seat. And Jesus' comeback to them is, hey, whoever is going to be great in my kingdom, they're going to be a servant of all. Are you willing to be great in the kingdom? Are we willing to serve like Jesus served? These 2,000 years later, we're still trying to jockey for the best position in the church, in the workplace. We're, we're still trying to get to this. I haven't got it. I mean, in a Christian world, we, we can look at the Christian bookstore down the road and we can say, man, thousands, there's thousands of books, hundreds of books on leadership. How to be the best leader. There's leadership podcasts everywhere. I haven't heard of one servant podcast. <laughs> how do you be the best servant? <laughs> no, we, we, we do get close. We say, how do you be the best servant leader? But there's still an aspect of how do I serve others and help others serve so that I can get a better position. We'd rather be generals, we'd rather have authority than be privates, just to be able to work, to do, do the work. Christian servant leader is not servant. But to be like Jesus is to serve, at least to be. When you did this, Matthew 25, when you did this to the least of these, you were doing it for me. In Matthew 20, 28, Jesus says this about his mission. He says he didn't come to be served, but to, he didn't come to be served, but to serve. Wow. Yeah. Is this evident in the life of Jesus? Is it evident that Jesus came to me? In Philippians chapter 2, I read it this morning, that he served, he humbled himself even to the point of death for our sake. How great a service has been done unto us. And I think, okay, carrying that dirty toilet seat, I think, I think they said, do you want to wash it off? And just put it in the bag, which is tied up. And put it. He sort of humbled himself even to the point of death. Yes. But then sometimes it's hard to just get some dirty clothes on and go and clean up somebody's house. And we've talked about uh, living sent. We, we've talked about meeting our neighbors. We've talked about learning our gospel story. We, we've talked about praying. All these things lead to us being better servants. You get to know that person at work, and you get to know the needs in their life. Joni, uh, we met her the, the first time. We got to know some of the, the needs in our life. And as we got to know the needs in our life, I mean, we got one thing that we can ignore it and send it away. Oh, that's too difficult for me to go and meet those people, and these people will meet your need in this kind of thing, this situation. Or, or the, the, the harder route is saying, okay, we can meet that need. Yeah, we can, we can pick you up. And she, she lived, she lived on, she moved across town at a certain location at one point in the last year. And, and so we said, okay, I, Somebody's going to have to go pick her up for MC every every Wednesday night. It's inconvenient for me to get home from work at 5.15, 5.30. We have Michigan Community at 6.30. We've got to make sure that the food is all set and ready to cook. And i got to lead and be ready to speak or share on a Wednesday night. And then have to leave at 6 o'clock to go pick her up to bring her back. Right. And you know, picking her up isn't an easy thing. You've got the hustle and bustle, the pains of the day. Getting in the car is a hassle. Buckling the seatbelt is a hassle. I'm buckling the seatbelt. Getting to the... Okay, I could be, I could serve, like I can literally, uh, you want to know how to be like Jesus? Find somebody you can serve. Amen. Find somebody, who is it around you? What are the stories that you're hearing? How can you meet their practical needs? What has God gifted you in? Or sometimes, what has God not even gifted you in? Because, but God has given you the heart to do. See, we all have certain shapes. We all have certain purposes and giftedness that God has put into us. And it's important for us to serve in these areas. Hey, well, I have a giftedness to speak. There's a maybe I don't really have the giftedness of, of changing diapers or, or or settling down a child. I don't really have the giftedness of, of singing. So I, you know, I, I don't really uh, sing. 
much. You guys hear me, but you know, I, I, you know, I, 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 there's a reason why I'm not given a, a mic on Sunday morning, right? There's a certain giftedness that we have, and in these areas, it's important for us to serve in our giftedness. But remember, God shaped us for service. That's not, uh, but it's our God shaped us in a way and created us in a way for service. But we can't be self-centered in our service. Without a heart to serve, we will be tempted to use our service or our shapes or our giftedness for personal gain. We can also use it as an excuse to exempt ourselves from meeting somebody's need. So I'm not great at calming down a child, so I can't serve in the nursery because he didn't know I'll be there. Or, uh, sorry, I can't sing. So on a Sunday morning in Conway, Missouri, when there, when our music person was gone, and there was nobody else to lead songs but a hymnal on the front pew, and I said, all right, open up your hymn to 112, and we sang a hymn that morning, and I got to lead the third grade. So our, our gift is our shape. It's important for us to serve in those capacities, those areas that we know God has gifted us in and given us those abilities. But it also doesn't exempt us from serving in areas that are in areas of need. No, but when we serve the least of these, Jesus says, you're serving me. God will test our hearts by asking us to serve yeah. in ways that we're not shaped. It doesn't fit our personality. I don't really like getting dirty. That was a hard, you know, that was a hard thing. And getting dirty and dusty and ucky. I'm sorry, I just can't do that, God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I don't really like dying either. I don't think Jesus is a big fan of it either. He said, Lord, if, if you can remove this cup from me, I mean, go ahead. But he said, you know what? I'm willing to serve, even to the point of death. So if we see somebody in a ditch, the car is broken down. We are just talking a little bit of, about it last night. We don't have to ask, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? I'm sorry, God, I don't have the gift of mercy and grace like you do. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know what to... No, the answer is go and help. Go and serve. We see a neighbor down the hall that, 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 has a, that, that are elderly and they need help getting their groceries from the car and back to their, their apartment. Hey, I don't have to say, God, what do you want me to do in this moment? I see them struggling, they're about to drop their milk. Go and serve. Serve the least of these. We find now somebody in our initial community, some of our neighbors, they, they have some medical issues and maybe they haven't been able to, to meet their monthly bills. Hey, the director asked God, God, do you really, I got a, a bonus check last week. Do, I, do you want me to, to give and to help out my neighbor or the person in my initial community? I said, go ahead, serve the least of these. Do you want us to help move our friend to a, 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 a storage unit that's 40 minutes away? <laughs> We're going past 620 <laughs> storage units on the way out there. <laughs> serve the least of these. We're serving Jesus. Or we may not be gifted for a particular task. We may be called to do it if nobody else is gifted as a rabbi. Yes. Amen. Though we're not, though we may not be gifted for a particular task, we may be called to do it when nobody else is gifted as a rabbi. That's right. Question, where God do you want me to serve? What can I do for you? He may call us to do the very thing that may be so opposed to who we are. Your shape, your shape will reveal your ministry. The giftedness that God given you, that will reveal your ministry. But your servant's heart will reveal your maturity. How well you're able to serve others, it reveals your maturity. It reveals the fact that, hey, I'm becoming, I'm growing to be more like Jesus himself, who served me even to the point of death. There's no special talent needed to help move chairs when we have dinners. There's no, there's no special talent that's needed to help carry groceries in. There's no special talent needed to uh, clean a floor for somebody else. There may be, uh, like I mentioned, there may be some talent needed to sing on stage. But we got to have the attitude that Christ has. The greatest among you will be the servant of all. 
If we look at uh, one of Jesus' famous serving moments, it was the Last Supper. Let's turn in John this morning. I think we can glean a few things that will help us. How, how you know, yeah, okay. Well, how do I get over that fact that there are people walking down the hallway and they're going to think weird because I'm dressed like my. I mean, even this morning confirmed that I walked in and everybody mentioned, Andrew, you're dressed a little different. <laughs> if you're one of those people, hey, great, you just help me make the point. Right? You're like, Andrew, I've not seen you dressed like that on Sunday morning before. I mean, Brayden asked me, hey, did you even change from yesterday? It's the same thing. The exact same thing I wore yesterday. And then, yes, I had to go to work last night. And then I had to go and put it back on this morning. So, we're turning to John. I didn't put deodorant on. You can hug me afterwards. It's okay. All right, John chapter 13. Jesus is serving. We're going to read this story here. Uh, John chapter 13, 1 through 17. It says this. It was just before Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of, the son of Simon the Petra, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God, and was returning to God. So important. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with his towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who, was, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, Do not realize now what I am about to do, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. The Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet, their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not, he, not every one of you. For he knew that there was one going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand which, what I have done for you? he asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I say, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Again, serving all over. I love this uh, passage because it, I think it helps us glean some points. How are we going to be a people who are sent to serve somebody? I think one point that was important to make is that Jesus knew who he was. In verse 3, it says, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Jesus knew what his identity was. He knew where his authority was. He knew what the end of the story was going to be. He knew that he could serve and this wasn't going to change his his personality wasn't going to change his position. He wasn't going to change anything about him because who he was was solidified already in the Father. So he could take a lowly position, put on some serving clothes, get down on his hands and knees, get a bowl of water, serve his, his uh, disciples' feet because he knew who he was. See, in the moments like yesterday when I had these thoughts of, I wonder what people will think of me, it, it tempted towards me and it led me to believe that in my heart I still don't fully understand who I am. Yeah. A child of God, that my position in Him can never change. That truth solidifies who I am so that no matter what my interaction is, whether I'm serving, whether I'm getting rejected because I'm sharing the gospel, no matter what it is, that can never change. The love that the Father has for me, my position as His son, or you, position as His daughter, it doesn't change. 
I already know the end of the story, that, that I have a hope that one day my inheritance will come. And that, that nothing in this world, nothing that other person's opinion of me, nothing, no other opinion matters other than the Father's opinion of me, that I have been faithful to believe on Him and to trust in Him in all things. And because I have done that, I will be like the sheep that will gain the inheritance of the kingdom. And nothing nobody says can change that. So how do we become a, a people? How do we become people who are willing to serve somebody? I think first it belongs, the first thing that will help us is knowing who we are in Christ. Knowing what's been done for us. Knowing that the future is secure for us. And that nothing in this world can do, nothing, no opinion of man can change what God's opinion of us is. By the way, God's opinion is that He loves us. That we are His children. Beloved. The second thing that I, I think uh, will help us in serving is that Jesus kept an eye on what mattered most. This moment, right before Jesus is about to go to the cross, right in verse 1 it says that he was aware, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave. He was aware of what was yet to come. And I know, maybe just like some of you, myself, uh, when I'm about to do something big or some kind of big milestone is about to happen, right before that is usually my most selfish moments. Right? I, I know this big uh, test is coming up. I know this big uh, move is coming up. I know this big event is coming up. So right before that, then I, I give myself a break, an excuse. Hey, it's okay. I can chill out for the next before, before the day. I can have my lazy day today because, hey, tomorrow I'm going to do something big for him. All right, I can, I, I can take care of it. Jesus had every right, right in this moment of it, hey, right before his death, I can, I can deserve, a, Jesus could deserve any moment, he could deserve a selfish moment, it was at that moment. I'm about to go give my life for them, it's okay, Jesus, I can just enjoy, God, I can, uh, Father, I can just enjoy this meal with my, with my buddies right now, that'd be great. No teaching moments at this point, no getting down, getting dirty. But he didn't think of himself first. In this moment, right before he's going to die, he thought about, how can I serve somebody? How can I equip these, these men to be better leaders? How can, how can I lead them and give them an example of what the kingdom of God is like? Right? I'm about to go give my life, die, but in this moment, I'm going to serve him. Because he kept his eye on what mattered most. 1 Peter 4, 11 says, when you serve... Do it with the strength that God provides. Yeah. And it took lots of strength for Jesus in that moment to serve the disciples, knowing one of them was his betrayer. Yeah. We serve well when we focus our eyes on things that matter eternally. The example of the story I've been saying all week about our, our friend in missional community what matters, I know that our serving, our kindness, this is that God's kindness, His compassion leads us to repentance. I know that there's an eternal destination that one day the sheep and the goats will be separated. I know that eternally it's, it's going to happen. And if our friend does not come to a point of, of receiving the forgiveness that God provides them, I know what the end of the story is for their life. And so if it, if it takes for me to show her, uh, and for us as a group to show her that she's loved, and to, to demonstrate the love of the Father to her, that she's accepted no matter what, she always, she's always trying to repay us. And she has nothing to repay us. She, I said, yeah. no, we just feel loved. Yeah, yeah. So if, I can, if we can, as a group, serve her in such a way that she gets a glimpse of what the Father's love is for her and she receives, then it, I have to have, in order to serve people, we have to have an internal focus. There ain't nothing glorious about unscrewing the back of a toilet. No. There's nothing, there's nothing in it for us, except for the hope that she'll be able to love the Father and receive His love. We serve with the eternal focus. It's going to help us be a people who serves others. I think the last thing is here that Jesus reveals uh, and will help us in, in getting this attitude of servant uh, of a servant heart is that he served them well because he loved them. 
maybe I mean, some of us need to pray for God help me love. Right? I, have, I need a heart of love, right? But Jesus loved his disciples. Verse 1, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. I got another opportunity to love them, Father. Help me to love them. I want to take this moment, God. I, I love, I love these disciples. I love even, and that betrayer over there. I love them. He loved his disciples. We serve because we love God and we love others. I always need a little heart transplant. God, help me to love. We start with somebody we know. That's why we've been talking this whole whole series. Meet your neighbors. Meet these coworkers. Get lunch with them. All of it is, is we get to know their story. We get to know, hey, God, ask, ask the question, how, how can I serve them better? How, how, how can I share your love with them? How can I serve them? And, and God will reveal practical ways and how to serve them. And, and then our point is, let's go do them. Let's go do them. Let's go serve well so that Jesus' name is made critical. Amen. Would you guys join me in that task? As a church to say, hey, I, I'm, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to pray. Man, I'm ready to speak. I'm ready to eat some meals with people because I know I, I have an eternal focus in my life. I, I have an eternal destiny. They have an eternal destiny. And I want to rearrange my life sometimes in order that they would be served. Yeah. Because I know when I serve these these, I'm like Christ. So I want to do a, a moment here, and I want to invite Mom to come and play the piano, but I want to take a moment and first reflect on, okay, wow, Jesus, you have served me, and I, I have, have a lot to serve. Maybe we realize in the sermon, yeah, the, the culture where, hey, it, it's better to have people serving me for, them, for me to serve has, has so influenced my life. I find it hard, too, to walk down the hallway with a couple boxes that are totally misshapen and out of order because I don't want other people to think of me as a servant. And we need a heart change. And maybe you're this morning, you say, yeah, God, change my heart. <clears throat> Jesus, you were the king of the world. You, you were on the throne with God, but you didn't e consider equality with God something that you could be used to your own advantage. No, you came and served me even to the point of death. Jesus, help me to have the same heart as you that I would have the mission to serve. So in this moment, I, I want us to pray. Father, help me to serve. Help me to have the heart that you have. That you this morning, you say, yeah, Andrew, I need a heart change. I need a change of heart to think that serving is actually the greatest thing I could do. That God has gifted me in areas, and the way that He's gifted me, He desires for me to serve in these areas. That's you this morning, you say, Yeah, Pastor, I, I, I would like God to come and change my heart. I want to raise, uh, just raise your hand, confession of God. God, change my heart. I God, help me. I see you, Jesus. Jesus, you served, and I see it as a kingdom principle that I should be serving those who need around me. God, I thank you for this moment. I love these moments of conviction. Because of these moments of conviction, I'm able to pray. And I, I pray a prayer, God, change my heart. So in your own words right now, I just want to encourage you to pray with me. God, change my heart. Change my heart. Help me to serve. Help me to see that serving is the greatest Father, help me to be humble. Jesus, you were so humble. Uh, help me to be humble like you were humble, that, that you lowered yourself from a position of authority in heaven down to earth to serve, to the point of death. Thank you for serving me, Jesus. I can just get in that attitude for thank you for serving me, for picking me up when I was messy. Putting me back together. Thank you, Jesus. Help me to have that same heart, to have that same attitude that, man, in this world I serve. I serve. I meet needs. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you are moving us as a body. 
to be people who look like you, who serve like you, to have hands like you, to have feet like you, to have, to have clothing like you, that you even stripped yourself of your robes in that moment to get down in the dirt and wash the disciples' feet. Father, I, I pray, God, that you would begin to change our minds. Father, help us to believe that serving is greater than being served. Change that in us, God. May we be truly counterculture. 